When it comes to mass production, we often think of factories producing everyday goods like clothes, food, or beverages, or more complex items like phones or cars. Few would consider the possibility of having an assembly line for rocket production, as manufacturing rockets is far from easy. However, for SpaceX and Elon Musk, that is entirely possible. Recently, Elon Musk revealed an impressive number regarding the production speed of Starship, reaching up to 300 units per year, no different from a mass production assembly line. This represents a significant leap in technology and smashes the entire rocket industry. So, how will SpaceX and Elon make this possible? Why does it take so long? Why is manufacturing rockets so difficult? Let's find out everything in today's episode of AlphaTech. Firstly, I want to ask you a question. Why is rocket manufacturing an inherently challenging task? Like Elon Musk said before, prototypes are easy, production is hard. Let's take a look at the members of the space rocket industry, and we can see how difficult it is to create a rocket. The largest space agency in the United States, NASA, took almost a decade to produce rockets like the Space Shuttle or the Moon Rocket SLS, costing tens of billions of dollars. Blue Origin also took over 12 years to produce the new Glenn rocket. It's not even finished yet. The giant ULA took nine years to build Vulcan, and they couldn't even produce rocket engines for their rockets, leading to the difficulty of completing a rocket when they had to buy rocket engines from Blue Origin, causing a delay of up to four years for this rocket. These are some examples to show us how difficult it is to make rockets. However, the challenges of rocket manufacturing for other companies seem unable to hinder SpaceX. They even continue to set higher goals. Recently, Elon Musk, the head of the world's largest private space company, has revealed part of the Starship plan on the X social network. Specifically, Musk said, The super heavy booster can be used more frequently than the ship as it returns in about six minutes and can theoretically be ready for reflight in an hour. The ship needs to complete at least one orbit, but often several have to have the ground track line to back up with the launch site, so reuse may only be daily. This means that ship production needs to be roughly an order of magnitude higher than boost production. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 per year, but ideally rising to 300 a year. This is the response Musk gave to a user on X when he was talking about Musk's boldness in producing Starship, similar to the automotive production line, a mass production approach that a SpaceX sibling company Tesla is also implementing. And because the Super Heavy booster can be reused within an hour after, while the Starship spacecraft can only be reused once a day, SpaceX will naturally have to focus on producing Starship in much larger quantities than Super Heavy. In fact, to achieve the ambition of colonizing Mars, SpaceX needs at least 1,000 Starship spacecraft. To achieve this within a decade, SpaceX's production plant needs to produce 100 spacecraft per year, equivalent to completing one spacecraft every 72 hours, meaning three days for each spacecraft to be completed. A fleet of 1,000 people, each capable of carrying 100 people, can transport 100,000 settlers or 150 megatons of cargo to Mars in the first year. With the target of 300 starships per year, SpaceX will need to meet the accelerated production demand, completing a limited number of starships in just 30 hours. Although to date, we still do not have official information about the time SpaceX needs to complete a Starship prototype. Based on the continuous appearance of new parts at the ring yard, we can guess the surprisingly fast pace of SpaceX's work. The production speed will continue to increase as SpaceX is also building a million square foot factory at Starbase. In early December 2024, SpaceX's Starbase director, Kathleen Luters, outlined in a presentation on expanding the facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, and the soon-to-be-completed rocket manufacturing plant named Star Factory. The scale of this project is immense. Luters mentioned, Does anybody that's been out of Starbase, they understand we're in the middle of a major construction activity. I mean, we have a, a million square foot factory coming online and, and being built right now. We have um, home, additional homes being built in the village. So we are really working hard to figure out how we can accomplish and achieve the goals that Elon has for us to get this factory up to speed, get a new office building up to um, built, get the homes built, um, and then 
and then be moving into, you know, this kind of the fast-paced activity of us producing and launching rockets at a regular cadence. Well, it's hard to imagine how it can grow so big. But do you remember Tesla's Gigafactory? SpaceX will do something even bigger than that. They'll turn Starbase into a place that, just like its name that Elon Musk gave it, Gateway to Mars, a place that can produce thousands of spaceships capable of traveling to Mars and beyond throughout the universe. But why does Elon Musk need to build so many starships? Because he's genuinely serious about settling on Mars. It's not a joke. It's not a scam to get more government money, though Musk won't deny that. No, Mars is the reason SpaceX exists. And now, in South Texas, Musk is getting so close to Mars that he can almost smell its red soil. Let's step back for a moment to acknowledge how crazy this is. Starship is just the upper stage of SpaceX's super heavy rocket, but it's considered the weirdest new spacecraft ever built. No one has ever built a rocket that can be fully reusable, and the second stage flying into space is the hardest part. SpaceX still has a long way to go to turn the interior of Starship into a living space for humans on the journey to Mars. But even building a vehicle that could be fully reusable, capable of lifting 150 tons into Earth's low orbit, is a marvel. It's more massive than the Saturn V rocket of the Apollo program. Compare that to NASA and its space launch system, SLS, the large rocket that the space agency developed over a decade. In fact, NASA has thrown each SLS core stage into the ocean after a single use. And Boeing didn't even build the engines for the rocket. It uses the main engines of the 40-year-old space shuttle. Despite this, and with nearly $2 billion in annual funding from NASA, Boeing's contractor is still sluggish in activities for Artemis. On the other hand, we can't ignore SpaceX's main legacy competitor, Blue Origin. But the reality shows that BO's rocket production capabilities are extremely poor and continuously stagnant. Their highly anticipated New Glenn rocket's been in production since 2012, expected to make its first flight eight years later in 2020, but it's been delayed for four consecutive years until now. Well, we might wonder, don't they have a flying rocket? That is true, but BO also has four rockets throughout its lifetime, and it still hasn't achieved orbit. Meanwhile, SpaceX is still progressing day by day with their long-term goal of building up to 100 ships, even 300 ships in 2024. This is insane. Honestly, when I look at the space aviation landscape, no one's doing anything remotely like this. Clearly, Musk has thought about this a lot. Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with some similar projects. He lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. Luckily, the rewards are well worth the effort. Now, Tesla's Giga Shanghai reaches a massive production speed of up to 2,000 vehicles in a single day. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Musk then applied the well-worth lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line to SpaceX, and that helps their workers avoid burnout. They'll work three 12-hour days and then have a four-day weekend. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts with a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX has been throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. The company's gearing up for a crucial test flight in early spring 2024, which is the third flight after the first two space flights exploded in midair. The hope with this flight is that Starship can complete three quarters of its journey around the Earth and return to the Pacific. However, despite SpaceX's pace, there are still many skeptics. Yes, it must be said, it's pretty darn complicated. But the one thing SpaceX has shown over the last two decades is an increasing competence in building rockets. When it comes to innovation and rocket science, is there anyone better in the world? Probably not. Success is not assured. It's not. But when it comes to space and automobile production, history's shown that Musk pushes through difficult financial and technical challenges. The Falcon 1 rocket failed three times before it finally reached orbit. Tesla faced bankruptcy on several occasions. Musk has always pulled through. He now flies the most powerful rocket in the world, the Falcon Heavy, and the most cost-efficient and only reusable orbital rocket, the Falcon 9. Tesla is the world's biggest electric car company. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.